Hey everybody, this is Jeremiah Craig and we have another in-depth review of a cowboy boot. Today we are featuring the Feels Good Full Quill Ostrich Boot from Dan Post's Diamond Pro line. That means today we're getting into the unboxing and initial review, then the extended tests, then we talk with Greg Hensley from Dan Post, and I finish things off with my final thoughts about this boot. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the unboxing and first impression of the Feels Good Diamond Pro Boot from Dan Post. And this is a full quill ostrich. All right, a little bit different of a Dan Post box than what we found before. This says the Cowboy Certified Boots, and that is part of this line. Okay, okay. Wow. Full quill ostrich. This is the black cherry color. Reaching into this boot to take the bag off. I'm already feeling the leather lining. It's really soft, much different than the thin red. Okay, this is a great looking boot and right off the bat, I'm noticing how much lighter it is. Also, right off the bat, I'm noticing the polyurethane sole here. This is very light and it runs up and is also the heel as well. So this boot does not have a stacked leather heel. It does not have a similar heel that we saw with the thin red lines. So I am very interested to see how this holds up and it also contributes to the lightweight attributes of this boot. Okay, so we got a double stitched welt. The black cherry color is really cool, guys. I love it. The ostrich skin is very supple. It's not as soft as some other ostrich skins that I've tried, but if we were to compare this boot to the Relentless Full Quill that I looked at a few months ago, this is still much more supple of a ostrich leather than that. And also the quills pop a lot more in this boot. If you remember, the soft strike insole in the thin red lines was not my favorite, but this has a little bit different of an insole it looks like. It's black. I don't know why they have a different insole and have named it the same thing. Maybe this is version two or just the newest version of their Soft Strike Comfort System insole. This is completely different from the one that they had in the thin red line. This is black, the gel is just not as apparent. It doesn't feel as wobbly and as floaty as some of the other gel. You know what I'm talking about. When you step on gel, it kind of feels like your foot is floating around on that gel. This doesn't feel like it has as much give as that other soft strike insole. I'm interested to try this now because I was super skeptical that this boot had the same insole that my Thin Reds did. Um, but now I'm interested to try this now that I see that it is a completely different insole. The other thing about the boots in the Diamond Pro series, because it's just not full quill ostrich, they also have smooth quill and just regular leather boots. They are so confident that you are going to like this boot, they have a 30 day comfort guarantee. So if you're not happy with how these feel after 30 days, you could just send them back. It's pretty crazy that a company is doing that, especially a boot company, when they get boots back after somebody wears them for 30 days, they're definitely not worth even half as much as they would be new. So they are super confident that you're gonna like this boot or else they'll just give you your money back before 30 days is up, which I think is really cool. All right, it's time to try these on. All right, so it's much more narrow than the D width that was in the thin red lines. I figured that the D width was going to be similar to the thin red lines, but I like how this fits. 
much more snug than the thin red lines that were the same make. Wow, it's incredible how light this boot is. And it looks great too. I love the full quill look. I love the black cherry look. This is great. The insole is much more supportive than that previous soft strike comfort system insole. So this version has definitely made some serious improvements. Wow, it feels completely different from the last version that were in the Thid Red lines. I was so skeptical of this insole, but I have been proven wrong. The, like, like I said, the width of it is very nice. I got an 11D, so this is the same width that I have in the Thin Red Lines, but it is not as wide. Very interesting. So this boot is probably not meant to be a work boot. This is meant to be a boot where you're not gonna be wearing as thick of socks as you would in that Thin Red Line boot. For the size of boot that it is, and the wide square toe, it is a very, light boot and the balance is really nice too all right let's go for a walk in these you know they did this video with a guy from espn who wears these boots and he said it is like wearing a sneaker and i have to say that i agree now that i'm out here walking around in them and sort of bouncing you got the snugness of a sneaker around the top of the foot but you also have the heel slip that comes with a boot. This is a very modern feel. It took a minute to get used to this boot during the initial review just because it feels so much like a sneaker than any other boot that I've tried. Now, usually when you slip on a boot, you expect it to feel a little bit like a boot, but this doesn't really. I mean, it has the look of a boot, but it feels more like a sneaker thanks to the polyurethane outsole and the insole as well. But how does it last? You know, am I able to get used to it? So for the extended tests, I walked a lot in the woods over here at the Arboretum and I did a lot of city walking as well. So here is the extended test of the Diamond Pro Full Quill Fills Good Boot from Dan Post. I am in the Arnold Arboretum and I'm wearing the Dan Post Diamond Pro Full Quill boots here, testing them out this week, doing an extended test. And I wanted to try out the woods here at the Arnold Arboretum while I'm doing coffee and music. See, I got my guitar on my back because this is an area where the thin red lines were a little bit of an issue. As I mentioned in that video, the insole would kind of scrunch up as I'm hiking up these hills. And I wanted to see if that was the same case here. So let's find a good spot for coffee and music. All right, so I found a good spot. No problems with the insole scrunching up when stepping down on uneven surfaces like roots or stones or things like that yet. I mean, it's still early in the test, but so far so good. I'm impressed. When the working season ended, those drovers had made up and explained under smiles the team's fighting cost too much so with all the season's pay the two turned to go but the team arose to leave their bones with those of the buffalo hey. two drovers look out so i was just messing around down here at the train station waiting for my fiance taking some pictures of the Diamond Pro. And I keep thinking about this and I wanna call this a city boot. And that's not anything negative. I'm not meaning that in a disrespectful way. I'm just saying that that picture that I just took, it looks like it's in the right place, right? It's a city boot. You have so many Western aspects about it but it just feels a little bit more urban. It, it feels better for walking asphalt, for concrete. 
I mean, it's got that sneaker feel. It has that polyurethane outsole and heel. This is meant for being on hard surfaces, but it's also not meant to work, I guess. I don't feel like it's meant to you know, be out in the field working or anything. It looks too good for that. I'm calling this a city boot. So I was impressed, you know, and there's nothing wrong with this thing being a city boot. Basically what I mean by that is it's a good looking boot that you can walk around all day in. Now, for me, being a country boy, I don't really like driving around in the city. So if I have to go someplace, I'm gonna try to walk because I just hate trying to find parking. I hate trying to deal with traffic. It's just a real pain in the ass. You know what I mean? So this being a city boot for me is a great option because sometimes I'm walking like two, three miles to go someplace. Like I'll say that two or three miles is around the corner for me. And my fiance makes fun of me all the time because I'm like, oh yeah, it's just around the corner and it's like five miles away. So she's not always happy with the amount of walking that she has to do with me, but these boots can handle that walking. But while I was walking around, I had a lot of questions that I was really curious about. So I was so happy to sit down with Greg Hensley from Dan Post, and he was able to answer my questions spectacularly. So here's my interview with Greg Hensley from Dan Post. Greg, thanks so much for joining me here today. You bet. Could you explain to me sort of the thought process behind making these Diamond Pro boots? Well, I'll tell you, Jeremiah, back in the, in the 80s and early 90s, there was an outsole called Crate that was out there. It was a thicker outsole. It was made from an uh, open cell polyurethane. Okay. It was very flexible, very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, that had issues because the open cell would absorb liquids in the bottom, it would absorb barnyard acids and diesel fuels and things like that, and it would disintegrate. Plus concrete, with the abrasion would really wear them out quick. So this is, the Diamond Pro outsole is a little thinner. It's made with a closed cell polyurethane, so it does not absorb anything from the outside. And it's very flexible, it's got the, like a cushion. That, along with our Dan Post uh, insole system that's in it, is a, is a phenomenal wearing boot. We're very proud of it. So. Nice. Yeah, I've noticed that it, there is very little wear, and I've mainly wore these on concrete. Um, so that's something that, that I've noticed. Now, this is also a really light boot, uh, and I'm wondering if that polyurethane really helps with this being so lightweight. It does. When you have your traditional uh, a rubber outsole or a high-density polyurethane or leather, that's pretty substantial in weight. The Diamond Pro outsole by itself is very light. That outsole also has a very a very uh, thin skin on it to help protect it from wearing out also. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about the differences between the previous soft strike insole and the soft strike insole that you have in the Diamond Pro line? Yes, Jeremiah, sure can. Our insole system has been upgraded over the years. We've re redesigned it three or four times. We were happy with it. Then we we were do pit trials, wear trials. We thought we can make it a little better, a little better. So we finally got it where it is now. It's actually a, an open cell polyurethane gel that's uh, it's a little more foamy. It's a uh, faster rebounding. It's got a new uh, Cambro cover on it that's perforated. Uh, this is uh, this is about three years of going through different insoles, finding out what what works best. We found the old insole uh, had a tendency to be a little hot on people wasn't breathable as we would like to. It felt great, but the breathability factor was an issue. So we actually redesigned to a, a, actually a simpler insole than it was. And it worked a lot better, more efficient on you. It's lighter, it's lighter weight and it breathes better. It doesn't have to get hot like it used to. Can you tell me a little bit about how you choose the exotic hides for this Diamond Pro line? We use a supplier in Mexico that's pretty exclusive to us. We go the extra mile in our product to make sure it's just a little better, a little better, and it costs more money. The company in Mexico that we use, it's called Quadra, they uh, they go the extra mile in tanning the skins to tumble it more and add some different softening chemicals to it. It makes it feel better than any other options you can get from other people. We're the same process where they came in out alligator and our litter skins as well. Dan Post goes the extra mile to make sure that it's, it's supple, has a good hand to it. 
and it costs more, but the end results work better for us. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it it does have a higher price point than some of the other uh, ostrich and exotics out there, but you are also innovating with different kinds of materials here. This is a very modern boot. It's a very lightweight boot. It works really well as a city boot, I feel like. Is that something that you had in mind for your market for this boot? Jeremiah's definitely a performance-oriented boot. We built it to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your leather sole boots uh, and your harder rubber sole boots have a different feel to it than these do. We gear this toward people who do a lot of walking. I know we had this boot at the Houston Stock Show this year, and we just I just came from Shine Frontier Days today. That boot's a very good seller. A lot of your older folks, the people do a lot of walking, a lot of uh, just on their feet a lot. Love the Diamond Pro outsole, and it's been, been doing very well for our company. I'm very proud of it. Now we've got the insole dialed in. I think we're ready to go now with different look, different skin. So a lot of good plans for that outsole in the future. Are you planning on releasing any round toes or medium round toes of a similar style boot that this Diamond Pro is, or are you just focusing on the double, uh, the double stitched well square toe at the moment? Well, we have some U toes coming out, which is more of a roper type of toe, a rounded nice. toe, and that. So different ways you can make that boot. We came out with the Diamond Pro series, I think, the, the first of last year, uh -huh. and it's, it's evolved into what it is today. Uh, it's phenomenally successful for us. A lot of rock and sales are in the Diamond Pro out sold. sold. The word's getting out, we're doing some marketing behind it, so I think you'll see a lot of good things coming out of that outsole in the future. Uh, more smooth leathers and definitely some more exotic skins in that. So. What exotic skin is next? I would probably think a belly, belly came an alligator, probably next on the, on the list. Nice, so, love yeah. that look. So, yeah. This was awesome. awesome. Just thank you so much for this time. My pleasure, Jeremiah. Now, I'm always a little bit nervous about trying a more modern boot. And I would consider this a modern boot because I like the traditional, you know, leather sole or a rubber sole. This is polyurethane, so it's much lighter. And I also like the leather insole. But I gotta tell you that this won me over. This is really comfortable. And I'm really impressed with how it's held up. You know, the ostrich skin, very soft and supple. What I would expect from an ostrich leather and what I would want when buying an ostrich leather. The polyurethane outsole has held up extremely well from being in the woods and also on the street. Now I did a lot of walking in these boots and it hasn't worn down very much at all. Maybe a little bit at the heel, but this main area up here pretty much looks brand new still. So I'm really impressed with how this is holding up, especially because it's so light as well. This is significantly lighter than the thin red line from Dan Post, which is a very similar look. This heel is very heavy. It's just an overall really heavy boot, but this one is really light. It feels spectacular on your foot. The insole, the soft strike insole from Dan Post has had enormous improvements. This feels so much better than the soft strike that was in the thin red line. This one was the gray one and it started to sort of shred apart or separate from the rest of the sole, like the top lining of it. This boot is really well designed. The insole is staying together. It's much more comfort, it's much more fitting, it's not as flat, it doesn't lose its support within the first month, which is what I felt like I was getting from the previous Soft Strike insole. This boot comes in at $442, which might seem a little bit more than some of the ostrich boots that you can find out there. Usually Full Quill Ostrich comes in at around, you know, $300 to $600, anywhere in that range, depending on who you get them from, at least from the major manufacturers. They can get a lot more expensive than that if you get custom. But this is in the mid-range or the upper mid-range of what an ostrich boot will cost you. And I feel like the extra attention to the design of this and what Dan Post is trying to go for is worth that little bit extra money if you're looking for an ostrich boot 
that kind of feels like a sneaker. This would be a good boot for some something that you have to be on your feet all day. Like I remember when I had a marketing job, we had these events and conferences and I had to man these booths and everything, you know, talk to people who were coming up. You couldn't sit down all day. You had to stand up behind a table and answer people's questions. This would be an awesome boot for that because it has the support, it has the comfort of a sneaker, but it also looks spectacular. This exotic ostrich is something that really works for sort of a, a really casual but business feel. It's a, it's a great look. I do wish that they had more options for toe styles. Now, everything in the Diamond Pro line, as far as I can see on their website, has this wide square toe. I would love to see a Diamond Pro option with this polyurethane sole and the improved insole in a round toe. And apparently, from what Greg says, that's coming. If this boot is a little bit out of your budget, don't worry, because we're doing a giveaway. I am super excited to announce a partnership that I just made with Dan Post for this boot where you can win your size. So you don't need to be worrying about being the same size as me because you don't have to win this boot. This boot fits me. You will win a boot that fits you. Hit that link in the description. I got a little bit of a survey for you guys to fill out so that I know your address and I know your email and I know how to get a hold of you if you win because working through YouTube can get a little bit funny sometimes. So hit that link in the description. Let me know your size and a few other details and you will get on the list to win this boot. And I will announce the winner on Saturday, August 10th during a live boots hangout. That's right, we are going to be playing music, talking boots, and I will also announce the winner. And you have two options too. You can either choose this black cherry full quill ostrich boot, or you can choose a brown smooth ostrich boot, depending on you know your preferences or what you're gonna use the boot for. So make sure you're subscribed and make sure you fill out the form in the description for your chance to win, and I will announce the winner live on August 10th. Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to comment about what you think of the Diamond Pro boot line from Dan Post. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace. Dan Post making moves to improve the line. Innovate in the modern boot so it can stand the test of time And it looks as good as it shows Oh, the Diamond Pro Thank you so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.